Hello. Yeah. Good afternoon, all the ambassadors, uh, chairman, co-chairman, and all the participants of uh, AJBN. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, today to talk about supply chain uh, resiliency. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm Eddie Ng, head of uh, PSA uh, BDP in terms of uh, digital and uh, analytics. Uh, basically, uh, my role in PSA BDP is to create uh, engines through uh, create powerful engines through uh, data science as well as craft data products for our customers. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, as we all know, uh, basically PSA is uh, known as a global port and terminal operators. Over the years, PSA has grown to into uh, beyond the ports. Over the last couple of years, PSA right now has two distinct business units. One is on ports and terminals, and one is on cargo solution. Okay, I will briefly explain about the two different business units. Uh, in terms of ports and terminal, PSA uh, was originally a government entity. In 1997, uh, we became corporatized. Basically, we split out the government function into Marine Port Authority, MPA, and we retained the commercial aspect of running and operating the ports. So this is where Ports and Terminal PSA is today. So on, on the other hand, we also have a unit business unit, new business unit known as a Cargo Solution. Basically, about five years ago, PSA has the initiative to embark and go beyond the ports. We're getting into trucking, into warehousing, uh, into logistics as well. So Cargo Solution is the logistics arm of PSA, basically. PSA BDP is the logistics arm of uh, PSA. And uh, over uh, the last couple of years, since uh, PSA has grown, uh, we have investment into different uh, deep sea ports and terminals. We also have invested into warehousing, trucking in the various location. And just uh, last year, in fact, just this year in uh, April 2023, we just completed the acquisition of uh, BDP International. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Just a very, okay, so before I go on, describe a bit of BDP International. Uh, right now, PSA International basically covers about 44 countries. Uh, we have 66 uh, deep sea terminal, including inland depot, rear uh, terminals, etc., etc., uh, uh, globally. Next slide. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we completed the acquisition of uh, BDP in uh, April this year. Basically, BDP International is a US-based company. It's a US-based freight forwarding and global logistics solution provider. Uh, it has about 5,005 customers we acquired in uh, 2023 uh, to augment our vision to embark on to uh, going beyond the port as a supply chain uh, service provider. Okay. Uh, before I go on uh, to into discussion of today's uh, a topic on supply chain resi resilience, I would like to show you a quick video on what the customer thinking in terms of uh, pain point as well as the visibility of uh, supply chain uh, visibility and uh, our product. Next slide, please. Okay, before that, uh, may maybe I will talk a bit more on the PSA BDP. Uh, this is a suite of solutions that we're offering. Uh, we are into the chemical industry, uh, consumer, life sciences, as well as automotive. Our range of services basically range from supply chain orchestration all the way to transportation in terms of multimodal, land, air, sea. We also engage trade management in uh, basically looking at HS code classification, uh, intelligent classification. We also involve in port and connectivity as well as contract logistics. And underpinning it, we have a suite of uh, uh, logistics uh, digital product uh, that will assist our customer in uh, managing the supply chain. Uh, before I go on to the uh, uh, details of this discussion, I would like to show you a quick video. Uh, next slide, please. Basically, this video will talk about one of the products that uh, PSA BDP has in terms of visibility and supply chain risk management. Uh, can I have the video? Thank you. And sound, please. Thank you. Uh, is there a sound? Uh, excuse me. Uh, no sound. Uh, is there anyone can help to restart the video with sound?
<laughs> he doesn't what? Maybe we just play it through and then I will explain along the way. So basically, this is just one of our products known as Smart Navigator. It provides you the visibility of your supply chain end-to-end. -end. It gives real-time information. Uh, you will know your position of your ship, your cargo, basically in real-time basis. We also incorporate a predictive analytics into it so that you will know your cargo even before we arrive. This will give a lot of benefit for downstream uh, planning in terms of our logistics. And the way we've done it is basically we, we have an in-house developed AI ML model that takes into uh, uh, different data, either AIS data, we took in uh, port congestion data as well, and uh, different weather data and so, so forth to provide that predictive ETA. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, uh, nowadays, uh, a lot of customers are looking at how to be more agile, resilient, and sustainable. So we have another product known as Risk Monitor. Basically, what it does is to go around scanning in the market, look at what are the events happens that are relevant uh, in terms of uh, disruption, supply chain disruption, be it port congestion, be it uh, different events like social unrest, uh, be it the, uh, uh, say, say for example, things like, uh, I think uh, let's wait for it to play, okay. Extreme weather, okay. Sorry? Okay, is it working now? You want... <laughs> okay. During the waiting time, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So, it's, uh, so you have only API to connect with uh, mm -hmm. vessels around the globe? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how far you um, have the connection, not only of vessels and also on the, um, the like, uh, you know, tax office and, uh, you know, the direct transaction after, you know, you get, you get a port in the ships mm -hmm. and after transaction then to get a data, all the things, or yep. only for the, um, the stock or vessels? Uh Okay, basically not just vessels, we are connected to the carriers as well, uh, meaning all the shipping line, the feeders, uh, even the LSP, the truckers, and so so forth. So we collate all this information. Uh, these are information along the supply chain partner. In addition to that, we also take live data, live satellite data from AIS. So we mix and blend some of this data to provide the uh, predictive analytics, to provide the visibility along the way. Okay, so then yeah. that the like owner of the you know shipper mm. could see uh, via internet the, the oh yes the of course this is a web based product oh, yeah okay mm -hmm. gotcha that's right yeah. okay yeah. thank you very much okay uh, is is the video working do we want to play it <laughs> <laughs> okay so so let, let me keep going okay. Yeah, I, I think there's some uh, problem, technical problem with the video. Sorry about that. Uh, we can send it to you. It's just to uh, uh, send you the link and you can play it uh, online, basically. Okay. So uh, just to continue the presentation, basically, I think uh, according to uh, recent Gartner research, about 33% of supply chain are being disrupted every day. And next slide, please. So we also do see increasingly they are more frequent and uh, frequent uh, so-called uh, disruption. For example, since the pandemic, we have the uh, Suez Canal issues. Uh, right now, extreme weather, be it fire, flood, uh, etc., uh, social unrest, cybersecurity attack, and so, so forth. 
And there is also a lot of a regulation in terms of government, in terms of compliance that we have to be adhere to. Uh, so these are all the various disruptions that are hitting us every other day. Okay, next slide, please. So in fact, I think this risk, risk management has been becoming one of the top uh, focus by different board uh, in uh, our customer's base. Basically, it has increased on a year on year by 85%. So this is gaining a lot of attention uh, since uh, last year. Uh, a lot of companies are looking at ways, how can we create awareness, basically providing the underlying visibility, able to uh, anticipate what are the uh, upcoming uh, potential disruption and eventually how to act on it. So this is becoming a hot topic. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just to, an example to show uh, the uh, monitoring. Basically, we can zone in out the different aspects. Say, for example, recently in the Israel-Hamas conflict, this is the area of zone. Uh, we are working on it in a sense of uh, based on the different data layer. So this is the zone of uh, all the risks happening. This is just happened to be one. And underlying it, we know all the vessels and the ships that pass by that particular zone. So we can actually flag it out and say, hey, you know, which are your shipments being affected and so on and so forth. Uh, next slide, we'll just show you a quick example of these are all the affected shipments relating to the uh, Israel-Hamas conflict. And another example uh, we have is also customer has a shipment. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, customer has a shipment uh, from uh, actually China into uh, Pakistan. So the shipment is on the way and it happens that there is a cyclone uh, brewing up. So the customer would like to know, hey, what are the area affected, which is my shipment, which is my containers? And effectively, we can quickly answer the uh, questions. Okay. Next slide. Yeah. So in addition to that, I think increasingly customers and consumers also want to know where my products come from. Uh, they also want to know whether they are compliant in terms of supplier-supplier, uh, whether I'm uh, and violating the uh, so-called forced labor rule, German duty act, and so, so forth. So as a result, there is increasingly customers would like to look at supplier-supplier, the different tier, tier one, two, three, uh, who they supply from and the supplier get their goods and raw material from who in order to trace back the entire supply chain. Uh, in addition to that, uh, customers also want to look at where's their flow, you know, from origin to destination, uh, where's the port of load, port of discharge, and in addition to that, what are the options and recommendations along the way? Say, for example, there's a port disruption in uh, Brazil. What are the options? Can you do multimodal? Can you ship via the uh, nearest port, the alternate ports, and so so forth? All right. Uh, next slide. So the way that we look at risk uh, is uh, on a uh, three different level. Underlying, as I explained earlier, is really looking at the operational risk, the day-to-day -day risk like uh, weather, your vessel delays, uh, port congestion, and so, so forth. The next tier that we're looking at working with customers is look at the uh, strategic level. My supplier, supplier, are they in compliance with the different uh, regulations? And the next level is really to look at the value chain, uh, my commodity prices, whether lack of uh, shortages of material that eventually will affect my supply chain downstream. Say, for example, you know, if you are a manufacturer of plastic, a upstream uh, shortage of LNG gas may actually affect your manufacturing. Or, for example, another way to look at it is uh, uh, for food, for example. Uh, if there's a swine food of, uh, in Africa, what does it mean to the supply chain? Uh, generally, it means it will affect certain pork meat, etc. So this will affect the supply chain. You need to anticipate and plan ahead. And maybe there is a substitute of a pork, maybe chicken and so, so forth. So these are some of the things that the trend, uh, the different customers are looking at at this point of time. And because we are looking at the different layer uh, with visibility and the risk, uh, and the risk, the supplier uh, visibility, what we can do is to combine all this into providing a uh, what if simulation, looking at what are the options alternative, what are the network you can optimize, what are the alternative routings, and so on and so forth. All right. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. I think with all this, what I would describe, I think if underlying is very important is the data. Data is the key ingredient to all to make sure that all this can happen. Basically, to make sure that the AI ML model will work. Uh, in order to support the digitalization initiative and the sustainability initiative. Of course, uh, we also need to make sure that we are wrapped around with the proper governance, AI ethics, and so, so forth, to provide the basic visibility, risk management, and on-time uh, delivery. And in addition to that, uh, next slide. As I mentioned, uh, we are building the different uh, layers of the data that we have today. So we do know all the ports, all the location of the ports, all the vessel position. 
So these are all the physical underlying assets. Over it, we know all the different resets happening. And in addition to that, we can map our customer supply chain on top of it. This will give you the complete supply chain visibility so that we can play around and look at the customer's data and say, hey, what if there's a choke in certain port? What if certain vessel is being om omitted? And what are the alternative options and so, so forth? So these are some of the things that a lot of customers are looking at in terms of how to provide uh, better visibility and uh, risk management, basically trying to make sure that uh, you know you have a first layer of creating the awareness, make sure you anticipate and you act on uh, some of these uh, uh, actions, some of these uh, alerts. Yep. All right. Okay, just the uh, next one slide. I just want to end uh, my presentation, uh, basically to talk about a very key important aspect is also uh, data governance. Uh, because in supply chain, I think uh, there are so many, many touch points, 20, 30 touch points just to ship a container from A to B. So along the way, data has to be shared. It's not just the ship's data, I think, not just the satellite data that we need. Along the way, you have the trucker, you have the different uh, depot, uh, data, warehouse data, etc., etc. In order to handshake, we have to make sure that it's a very strong governance uh, so that everybody is willing to collaborate and share the data in a very secure and trusted method manner. So in summary and in short, basically, generally technology is not an issue. There are technology, be it IoT, blockchain, AI, ML. It's always the mindset of the entire stakeholder along the supply chain, how to effectively collaborate and share the information and the data in order to create the value along the supply chain so that you can react in advance uh, before certain things happen. And if you know something will happen downstream, uh, you can then plan or replan accordingly to make sure that your supply chain uh, is more resilient and sustainable. Okay, uh, I thank you. Yeah, any questions? Yeah, open for any question as well, if any. Okay, if not, no, yeah, to, go ahead, I'm go ahead. Sorry. No problem, go ahead. Um, it, it is really interesting technologies and mm -hmm. so what if there, there's some uh, um, the kind of the owner okay wanted to see that uh, location but you are port company not the uh, vessels mm -hmm. and uh, not a logistic company but uh, uh, but, but are you mm -hmm. providing anyone who want to have this data as a SARS as a SARS solution? Yes, okay. Let me explain. I think early on, maybe just to rewind a little bit. Uh, right now, PSA Group have two distinct business units, ports and terminal, as well as cargo solution. So we are involved in the supply chain logistics movement of the goods, meaning in terms of trucking, warehousing, and so, so forth. So we do logistical services as well. So that's one. So when we manage on behalf of our customers, we know all the milestones. We work and collaborate with the different 3PL, the trucker, the carriers, and so, so forth. Uh, of course, one of the very important aspects is really on data governance. We cannot just share data uh, you know, with anyone. So again, the real ownership of the data generally comes from the customers. The customers will then have to agree that say, hey, instructing their 3PL, you are managing on their behalf, that certain process and protocol has to be followed, certain data format, minimum data has to be shared. And uh, generally, when it comes to sharing of data, uh, customers are not so willing to share sensitive data. Usually, you, you share events data, you know, when you arrive, depart. These are not so sensitive. So generally, it's quite okay. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Kitian Kawasan. I just want to add on to uh, Eddie's response to your question, okay? So hi everyone, see you again, we, we met yesterday. <laughs> right, so the first part is that, you know, we want to explain that PSA has two classes of business. Mm. So one is ports and the other one, the cargo solutions, mm -hmm. which is also a 3PL business. Yep. So this product that we started in-house for Smart Navigator and Risk Monitor, really the purpose for us initially was to provide our shipper customers, our manufacturers, the visibility of the data, right, to be able to see what's going on, okay. Yeah. 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 To be able to see what's going on and to be able to track where the goods are going, mm -hmm. right? But over time, we realized that it has opened more opportunities to even other customers. Taking the PSA group as a start. So when we went through it and we went to the ports, 
So I know we have ASEAN Japan and, and we are very well connected to the ASEAN, ASEAN and Japan ports. When we went to the ports, our port business were very excited about this product too because they are then able to tell whether the vessels will be coming on time mm -hmm. as the carriers would have declared uh, on performer and whether they are indeed on performer within this area. So that's one. So that opens up a pool of customers to us. Then mm -hmm. another aspect was um, the procurement guys. Because the procurement guys, you know, when they want to do their supply chains, it's very important for them to look upstream to see who their suppliers are, right? And whether they are susceptible to shocks in the supply chain, in which case they will have to look at plan B and plan C, right? And that's where Eddie just shared that the whole supply chain looks at the risk scoring and also the compliance scoring. Right. So, so it has been a great journey for us and, and it has opened up a lot of opportunities and what we envisage as a very small segment of customers have widened considerably. So, you know, we'll be happy to partner any one of you, right? Uh, pardon me, Cecil, I know this is a marketing pitch, <laughs> but uh, you know, whoever who wants to co-create or co-develop the product with us will be most excited to explore. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you.